In the words of Selena Gomez, everything is not what it seems. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Nick Zararis. How are you? I'm good. I'm th- it, it's scary how dark it is already. It's like 5 o'clock, and it looks like the middle of the night already. <laughs> today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Today, we are going to be talking all about, uh, you know, a nice little refresher for those who may be consuming a lot of different takes on the Corey Perry situation. Uh, We're going to talk all about Cap Friendly and some of these proposed trades that the lovely armchair GMs put together. And of course, is this actually? A rebuild? Is this, do we need to just retool on the fly? All that and more on today's episode of Lockdown Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well. This whole thing's been a nightmare from the start, hasn't it? I saw the original tweet Monday afternoon at one o'clock and I jokingly tweeted, Oh, we got fans with sources again. And here we are a day and a half later. And this is the environment we're existing in right now. It's it's really a testament to just how small the hockey community is online. Where like, mm-hmm. if you made up a rumor like that about somebody in the NFL, it probably doesn't get past your sphere of people on the yeah. internet because there are just so many people on who care more people who care about football than hockey. The fact that this got to the point where every single insider had to do the "Why would you guys possibly think this is even remotely possible?" Like they don't actually report anything we need to know. So I I understand why things like this happen. It's just when there is not, when you do not have definitive answers, you get speculation, which is why the Blackhawks made a mistake waiting so long to say anything. Uh, You can always opt for silence and try and wait things out. Generally speaking, that's not a terrible strategy. But in something like this, where somebody who's on your team is being impacted by what's being said, that's a case where you might want to get out in front of it a little bit more than the Blackhawks did. Like they waited till the end of the day today, like a day and a half after this kind of spiraled a bit. So there's just there's a lot of different things people have to take into account. and Remember, as we're talking about this situation, because there are actual people involved as well. Yeah. And one of those people is an 18 year old that is fresh meet in the NHL he is you know in terms of like yes he's legally an adult but in the NHL he is very much a child which is why they brought Corey Perry in to be a father-like figure now did this mentorship go south who knows we don't know and you know I understand that they have to do things for their own legal reasons and you know protect the organization and They also have to respect a lot of people's privacy because, I mean, Kyle Davidson came out and said it doesn't involve a player or family. So, I mean, this could be something a lot bigger that none of us had on our sources radar. Yeah, no. And that's why that press conference was wholly unsatisfying to pretty much everybody. That's Mm -hmm. been the recurring sentiment I've been reading on online over the last 20 minutes, half hour is why'd they do that? That that was, you know, that that was the epitome of this could have been an email. They could have just said it doesn't involve anybody on the team or their families. This is an internal matter. We investigated. This is the conclusion we came up with. The PA didn't fight us on this. And when it's appropriate, we will comment again. That's all they had to say. And instead they dragged this out. And it's why a lot of people do not give these organizations the benefit of the doubt, nor should we be giving people in positions of authority with power and resources, the benefit of the doubt, especially an organization like the Blackhawks that in the past has shown it does not deserve said benefit of the doubt. So there's a lot to unpack here. And a lot of this comes down to just, you know, media literacy, 
understanding where these ideas come from, where these strategies to understand this information comes from, because I understand it is overwhelming. There is a lot of, there is just a lot of people talking online now, and we've kind of entered the golden age of misinformation where it's pretty much impossible to understand what is and isn't real. Like even me who like, you know, took an entire media literacy class and is generally pretty good at spotting BS. Even I get okie doked every now and then. So for the person who isn't as well versed, I understand why this kind of feels like, well, why are the journalists getting all mad about this? It's just funny. I understand those people who are just like, I'm just here to get jokes off. I do. But for yeah. a lot of people, the reporter types who are who see this as well, why would you possibly believe, believe something so stupid? Well, because you didn't say anything. Right. You didn't go and report anything. You didn't investigate anything. So people drew their own conclusions. I'm not saying that's right, that they should have drew those conclusions, but they're trying to fill in those gaps. Yeah, I took, uh, it was actually my English Comp 2 class in college. We had to write a our final paper on a conspiracy theory. Now, that probably sounds really crazy, but well, you have, the point was to fill in the holes and like why people might think this certain way or go that path. And I think that's exactly what people are doing here. There well, was a screenshot of a group chat with no verified sources. And no insider came out and immediately said, guys, like, I've talked to several sources. Streets are saying this, but I'm hearing this. And no no one shot it down until uh, way too late. And why, no. why would you believe anything this organization says? Like, why would you take it at face value? No, and that, that's the other thing to consider here. There are a lot of people... I can say I am one of those people who are in group chats, who are with people, who know people who are in the media. I hear a lot of things. I have no way of talking to anybody involved in the things I'm hearing to verify what I hear, which is why I don't masquerade as a reporter like a lot of people on hockey Twitter like to do. I do not pretend that I have sources. Occasionally, I hear some things. I'll let my friends know because, you know, the, they get a kick out of knowing things before the news breaks. But... I know I cannot verify the information. So if I go and report it, worst case, I make my friend who told me this in confidence look bad because they can kind of weed out where the information came from. Mm -hmm. Or if I got it right, I was lucky. And that's right. the thing. The vast majority of people on hockey Twitter specifically, they are trying to fill in the gaps, as you just said. They are using the actionable information we know. Well, Corey Perry's been away from the team for a number of days. What could they possibly, what could it possibly be? Oh, the moms were on the trip with the team the last time around. What can we do with that? That's all this is with somebody putting, trying to put one and one together to make two. When in reality, they were just blindly guessing. That's really all it was. And it spiraled out of control because that's the way the internet goes. You know, what, what's the, the Mark Twain quote about disinformation spreading twice as fast as the truth, whatever. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's exactly it. And I think that it's important to consider your sources. Uh, an Instagram account that reports on celebrity gossip that is on several publicists' payroll, not exactly a, a source. Likely place for him to be. Yeah, exactly. Likely place for him to be. And a likely place for us to be is cap friendly. And we are going to talk all about uh, these proposed trades involving the Flames pending UFAs coming up here in just a minute. But I do want to take a quick break here and talk to you, Sleeper. Sleeper is a uh, the number one daily fantasy hockey app for the Lockdown NHL Network. Uh, locked on go to for fantasy sports and daily hockey because with sleeper you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests all you have to do is pick whether studs like mcdavid ovechkin Sidney crosby or nathan mckinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like sleeper for sleepers for goals assists saves plus minus and more in a given game to win 100 times uh, your bet on Sleeper, you just need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. Hear, hear me out, Flames fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. 
Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into today's episode of Locked On Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube. I got this idea last night while I was it's watching. It's always fun. I was, you know, there's definitely some, I don't know, during the summer, I feel like this is such like a fun thing to do, too, because it's like everyone's bored. But now everyone's just, try- just trying to get rid of things. And by things, I mean pending UFAs and it's always fun to see what people put together outside of Calgary too. Oh yeah. No, a lot of the flames ones are very funny. Like the first one I have up here is titled Nylander comes home and it's just Jonathan Huberto at 50% retained for William Nylander one for one, like stuff like that. Like, you know, (laughs) I appreciate the sentiment. If Huberto was playing well, there's a non-insane world where you could talk me into something like that working at 5.25 million if he was a point-per-game player and playing at a high level. There's a world where you could talk me into the the Leafs turning an expiring contract into another good player. There's a world where that could make sense. Of course, this is this reality where Jonathan Huberto is not a point-per-game player and hasn't been one in two years. So I'm going to close that tab and we're going to move right along. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's crazy. Okay, this is interesting. The Islanders, who've suffered key injuries on their back end, Adam Pellick and Sebastian Ajo, both got hurt in the last week. Minton Fraser, who I, I, a prospect I've never heard of, and a third-round pick for Chris Tanev. Okay, that is something that is within the realm of possibility. My guess baseline has been either a second or, or a second or third-round pick and a B prospect, somebody who – Okay chance of making the NHL, but not a lock for making the NHL. That's not impossible. That at least is grounded in reality. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't know anything about this prospect, but if he is closer to making the NHL, like if he's NHL, you know, he's preheating, almost ready to make that jump. um, I would say that's definitely something that they would look to work with as well. Let's see how old this guy is. He is 19, 2004, 6'2". Okay, so he's tall, a center. Okay, uh, what are his counting stats? Uh, these counting stats aren't awful. I mean, he's over age for the WHL last year, so 60 and 50. That's not bad. I mean, that's the type of prospect you would get for Tanev. I wouldn't be mad if they did that. Yeah, no, that feels that feels fair. I'll give them an A for that. Vladar is the Oilers' best option. Daniel Vladar and Adam Rizichka for Jack Campbell and Dylan Holloway. I'm closing that tab. The Flames do not have the cap space to take Jack Campbell's money. They could not do that. In theory, I understand the idea again, but for yeah. the Flames, the money doesn't work, and they already have an oh, they have a starting goaltender who makes a, lo- a decent amount of money, so that doesn't work for them. Okay. This one is kind of interesting. This is Chris Tanev for Kale Yarncrook, Nick Abruzzi, and a Leafs first-round pick title. This is probably a joke, but I would do it from somebody whose screen name is the Leafs 2023. So that's interesting that a Leafs fan would be willing to give up their first-round pick and a roster player for Chris Tanev. That yeah, feels like a lot. That does feel like a lot. And, I mean, the Flames have already tried the Kale Yarncrook experience. and. Um, it didn't – I mean, I know he's not necess- – or he wasn't necessarily uh, a scorer and he wasn't brought in for his offense, but he has kind of found that spark in Toronto. And if that was something he could bring over, I mean, uh, sure, but uh, we've already seen it, and I don't know if it's worth that. Another Chris Tanev trade. Chris Tanev for Nick Abruzzi, Nick Abruzzi who I just mentioned, a third-round pick and a first-round pick. That's probably too much for the Leafs to give up. And then Columbus is in here to launder some of the cap space and Columbus is getting a draft pick for taking, (laughs) for taking on some cap space. So again, that feels like a lot for the Leafs to give up a first and a third round pick and a prospect for a rental. I think you could probably get away with just a second round pick in that prospect. And you could Mm -hmm. probably get Chris Tanev with some salary retained. It's just a matter of getting a third team to broker that extra million and a quarter. Okay, what do we got here? Calgary D2 Leafs. Okay, this is like half of the Leafs roster. Oh, so okay. Connor Timmins, David Camp, Nick Robertson, Nick Abrusi, Topi Nimella, 
Fr- Minton Frazier, a first round pick, a third round pick, a fourth round pick, and a third round pick. And the Flames are giving up Chris Tanev, Nikita Zadorov, and Mackenzie Weger. No. Yeah, no. Absolutely not. The money works, surprisingly, which just at face value, I assumed with this many moving parts, there was no way the money was going to line up, but the money works. Um, That would make sense if the Leafs were considering rebuilding, and they would want something a little bit better than Nick Robertson as being the headlining piece of a package where they're giving up Mackenzie Weger. Mackenzie Weger is one of like the 15 best defensemen in the entire league. I feel like for that type of player, and they got team control for, I want to say, two or three more years, you're looking at probably at least one more good prospect or straight up roster player to make that work. Yeah, no, sorry. I'm not letting Mackenzie Weger go. You no, guys if, if there was if like um if Matthew Nyes was in there as opposed yes. to one of these guys, you know, or if another first round pick was in there, then there's a world I could see that making sense. Definitely. Okay, what do we got here? Kadri. Okay. Nazem Kadri to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Jack Roslovich, Jake Bean, and a third round pick. Um, the money works. Roslovich is interesting, but at this point, I want to say he's 25 or 6. And he is he's 26. His career mm-hmm. high in points is like 30 something, 40 something. Yeah, his career high in points is 45. This is kind of who he is. If this was two years ago or three years ago, Jack Roslovich, and you could talk me into he just needs to find a good landing spot sure. to meet his upside, then okay. And the le- and your Calgary, you have the added bonus of getting out of Kadri's money long term, which is the real reason you would be doing this. So maybe you want to argue that you're going to get less in return because your Kadri's contract is so long term. Okay. Mm-hmm. This contract, this trade is not insane. This is moderately workable. I think the framework of a trade is here, but it probably needs a little bit more. Yeah, and isn't Jake Bean a little older too? Yeah, Jake Bean. Jake Bean was in the NHL video games when I was in like high school because he's twenty five. He's twenty five. So (laughs) he's a fringe. He's a fringe NHL defenseman at twenty five. That's who he is. That's just a throw in there. Yeah, that's. I mean, the Flames could use him defenders but no we're good um yeah. okay anyway. this one i like this one i like purely because i just like the player this is jonathan huberto to columbus for patrick line and jake bean i anything that gets me a goal scorer sure yeah believe the, the flames need a guy who can just let it rip and if you just want to tell line all you got to do is shoot eight times a game and we're not going to annoy you to back check I feel like he might be into that and frankly that's been an issue is finding the right way to get through to him He's a good player, and you know yeah. you'd have the added bonus of getting rid of Huberto's contract, which is totally wholly immovable in real life. Yeah, so I mean, I wouldn't. There's no way it would ever happen. But no, 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 no. <laughs> in this little fantasy world, I I would pick the phone and be like, "Yeah, let's let's work out the details. Let's figure this out." Rasmus Anderson, you're gonna have to take Patrick Lining out. To oh God, no, not the chaos giraffe. Tyler no. Myers, a first round pick and a second round pick for Chris Tanev. No. I do not want Tyler Myers anywhere near the flames. I'm good on that. He no. stinks. Just he in front stinks. of their net. He can okay, this I like. This trade I like because this player is good. So the Calgary Flames are going to trade Noah Hannafin to the Dallas Stars for a first round pick and Thomas Harley, who is a good act, who is a, a I won't say blossoming, but a NHL caliber defenseman who clearly has levels to get to is still young. That's the type of trade the Flames need to be looking for to make in real life. I don't think you would get Harley in a one. You'd probably get like Harley in a three or Harley in a four Mm -hmm. to make that work. But that's the type of trade the Flames need to be looking at where they are getting guys who are right on the cusp and just need a little bit more playing time, a little bit bigger role, and then might be able to get a little bit more out of them. Yeah, I mean, I... Again, not something I hate. It's no. Doable, for sure. Uh, do we have time for one more? Yeah, this one is chaotic. I wouldn't do this, but I, I like the idea here for Florida. I mean, Florida's getting their guys back, so I don't know how much they really need two defensemen. They already have, like, seven, but Zadorov and Noah Hannafin for Dmitry Kulikov, Carter Verhage, and Nick Cousins. Carter Verhage would be 
the second best goal scorer on the Flames. The Panthers wouldn't do this, but for the Flames, I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, Hagee can score in clutch situations as well. And I mean, as long as you find the back of the net consistently, I'm not going to sit here and complain because we need more of that. Or the Flames no, definitely not. That. But coming up next, we are going to talk about, uh, I guess, the state of the Flames and were we too quick to hit the panic button on the rebuild. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break here and talk to you about our next sponsor. If you're running a business, uh, business of one, you're wearing many hats in your day-to-day life. With collective, bookkeeping and accounting don't need to be one of them. You can start saving thousands of dollars and hours of your time by letting Collective handle your business's paperwork. Let Collective handle all the paperwork you dread, like corporate formation and compliance taxes, bookkeeping, accounting, and even payroll. The best part, it is at the fraction of the cost of a CPA. Join thousands of solo entrepreneurs who have saved an average of $10,000 per year on taxes with their structure. Right now, Collective is offering one month free and no onboarding fee when you go to collective.com slash locked on NHL and tell them locked on NHL sent you. That's a $550 value for free when you go to collective.com slash locked on NHL and tell them locked on NHL sent you. That's collective.com slash locked on NHL. Make sure you tell them locked on NHL sent you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Flames. Uh, make sure you're following us on social media at Jess Velmosto and at Nick Zararis. I, I, are, are the Flames okay? Are they um, okay? That was a good win against Vegas. Anytime you can beat a good team, anytime you can beat a good team, I'm going to be a little less inclined to start nitpicking when you're a team like the Flames where every game, as long as you're in it, that's really kind of the goal right now when you're when you're just trying to find who, your identity, get mm-hmm. out of a rut. It's really more so just about being competitive every night and not getting guys tuning out. That would have been the real like, OK, they're phoning it in now. Season's over in mid-November. That's what we that's what we were saying a few weeks ago was the effort's been there. The results haven't been, but it's not like they're playing poorly. It's not like they've given up. They've been rewarded. They've gotten some bounces. They're getting a, They're getting closer. I, I'm not ready to say, like, hey, maybe let's reevaluate everything. I think still, at best, they're a fringe playoff team, which you shouldn't put a lot of eggs in that basket for mm-hmm. as far as building your team. But it, it's been – I'm happy for the guys on the team that they've had these moments. Definitely. And I think that, you know, any kind of – uh, win is a win, regardless of, you know, if it's against a team like bottom of the barrel team like the Sharks or the reigning Stanley Cup champion. Now, obviously, they mean more and do more for your confidence. But I think that this team, you know, the fact that they were able to stay with it last night was uh, incredible, especially uh, Dan Vladar getting ran into not once, but twice. With an emergency backup goalie situation right there. Yeah, man. There was a moment there where I was very worried coming back from the Ranger game, and I saw Vladar got ran up on, and I was like, oh, God, they're really about to put some high school kid in the net. And (laughs) It was like two and a half minutes into the thing, into the game, and I was like, okay, well, I guess something else has to be on. But no, I think that – I don't think that the Flames need to immediately – sell players i think that craig conroy is you know taking things at his own pace and he's probably going to continue to do that i mean we're seeing these injuries pop up more and more but if they are going to trade someone it needs to be chris tanev i love him he is great i mean he blocked it blocked a shot with his face last night one wrong move you can't move him if he's out no, no. So, bye. I guess it's a. I, it's 
I get pulled in both directions because, like, I, I don't want the team to phone it in the rest of the way, which is what trading guys no. this early would have done. That's why I, even though I thought it would make sense from a team building perspective, I didn't think they would actually do it. And I just feel for those guys who went through last season where it just felt like nothing could go right. So they deserve to have these moments of, like, hey, we know we're probably not winning the Stanley Cup this year. But at least we won this game. I feel good about that. And I feel for the guy. I feel for those guys. I do. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. And I think one of the funnier moments last night uh, was Dan Vladar's press conference, little media availability after, where someone asked him, you know, about the being ready to go on such short notice. And he goes, well, when you play for Daryl two, for two years, you, you got to be ready when as soon as you can like you're you're ready for it and I was like oh I'm glad we're still in this kind of mentality I'm sorry that you you were put through psychological warfare for two seasons but and it was he made some fantastic saves he was I really good last that. considering how poorly he played in previous starts uh I was not confident but I will say last night he did look pretty good yeah, no, the one save he had on the two-on-one was really nice. That was a really incredible save. He had a great eight. The Flames goaltending has not been the issue this year. They have no. issues, but it has not been the issue this year. No, and I I feel like it is, I mean, obviously the Flames need to find some offense. That's They can do some soul searching for that, but I feel like, I don't know, Rasmus Anderson, it, something isn't right there. I don't know what it is. Nikita Zadorov out of position, does not care. Just clocking in to clock in and do the He's bare freelancer. Minute. Yeah, he does not care, which, I uh, mean, he, whatever. He calls his own number a lot. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I hope that, you know, the defense can tighten it up and figure something out because uh, bailing out your goaltender now and again is pretty helpful. Very much so. But I think that'll do it for us here on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all so much for tuning in and supporting the show. It is hard to believe that Nick and I have been doing this together for a year now. It's crazy. Um, so thank you, everyone, whether you've been listening since day one or over the summer. Whenever you started listening, thank you. Um, make sure you're subscribed. Best Christmas birthday gift for people is just let them know that they can subscribe to the show. And you can follow us on Twitter at Jess Belmosto and at Nick Zeraris. Um, I will be back tomorrow, and uh, hopefully there will be some positive things to talk about and not just rumors and speculation. Nick, do you have any parting words for us? I can't wait to blow my nose. <laughs>